Hello, my friends. Welcome to my review on the collab line. This is a Sally Beauty drugstore price line. This was a line that was created in collaboration with eight influencers on YouTube. Uh, they had supposedly a hand in creating this, but now I've put some of these products to the test and I'm ready to share my opinions with you. So hang tight. We're going to get started with that right now. As soon as I heard this line existed, I knew it was something that I wanted to try and review because I am a big advocate for influencers working with brands to improve products and make them better for customers. So this is kind of what I've always wanted to see from brands. So I was really excited to see this. There were eight different YouTubers that were involved in this. I will have all of their announcement videos and their channels linked below in case you'd like to check them out. Some of the ones that I had heard of before were What Would Lizzie Do, Coffee Break with Danny, and and X Sparkage. Those were the ones that I either have previously been subscribed to or am currently subscribed to. Now, the first video that I saw on this line was from Coffee Break with Danny, so I decided to not just pick random items off of the website because there's a lot of products, anything you could possibly want from primers and foundations and concealers and brow pencils and lipsticks and lip glosses and really anything you can think of that they make for makeup, Collab probably has it. Um, so instead of just picking randomly, I went with the things that Danny had recommended Mended. With collaborations with YouTubers, there's different levels of involvement. So I just wanted to share with you the involvement that these influencers had. The story is that they were all flown to New York in February for three days uh, to test products, do a photo shoot for the line, things like that. Supposedly the group got along great. That was a report from like all the videos. I watched them all. They met, they tested the formulas, they did swatches, they provided feedback. And then about a month later, they all got boxes of samples to to again test and give feedback from their homes remotely uh, to the company for improvement. And then the collab line came out in October. According to a couple of the influencers, there is a plan for another uh, two more lines, the spring line and then the fall line of 2018. They are a cruelty-free brand, but they are not vegan. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we get into ingredient analysis. Now, as far as the parent company being cruelty-free, you kind of have to take it for what it is. Sally Beauty Supply is a distributor of all kinds of products, just like Ulta and Sephora and a lot of beauty supply stores. They supply things that are cruelty-free and not cruelty-free. So they do profit from products that are not cruelty-free, but as does Ulta and Sephora and CVS and pretty much anywhere you could buy cosmetics unless you buy it directly from the, the cosmetic manufacturer. So it's up to you how much you want to, um, you know, take that to heart because I know with like Too Faced, for example, because they're owned by Estee Lauder, some people do not buy Too Faced and do not consider them to be cruelty free. But just so you know, the collab line is cruelty free, which means that they do not test on animals. This line is available both in store and online, and the price range is from $6.99 to $19.99. They have a little set that's $19.99, but the individual products I think go up to like $16.99, something like that. So let's talk about the products that I purchased. So this is the Shape and Shade Ultra Fine Brow Pencil in rich brown. It is $9.99. It does come in six shades. Then I have this eyeshadow palette. This is the pro eyeshadow palette. This is in the shade First Impressions. There are four different palettes available, and I just wanted to go with the purple one because I like purple. It is $14.99. It's one of the more expensive products in the line. Next up, we have the High Rise Insane Length Mascara. It does come in three shades, black, extreme black, and black brown. Mine is just in regular black. And then the full body lipstick, they do come in matte and satin finishes. I got one matte and one satin. I will be trying those on for you. So we have Binge Worthy, and then we have Really. And you can see the shade colors on the bottom, which I really, really like. Because uh, nothing is more frustrating when you're in a hurry in the morning and you don't know what lipstick it is. You've got a bunch of them, they look the same, you gotta open them all up and roll them up to figure out where your lipstick is and it's like Burr! so it's really nice to have it on the bottom so you can just kind of store them this way and then you can see exactly what you're looking at so that's very very nice I like that these are $10.99 each and they come in 16 shades and on the website they are clearly labeled as matte or satin I know that some drugstore brands will just kind of put it say some of them are matte some of them are satin but you don't really know until you take them home collab does a really nice job of labeling them now I'm going to go ahead and show you how I put on the products today 
on my face. I am wearing the brow product, the mascara, all, only this eyeshadow palette. I didn't use any other eyeshadows but this one and the lipsticks, of course. And yeah, that's it. All the things. I'm wearing all the things on my face. Why didn't I just say that? I don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and play that for you right now. Alrighty, all ready for some swatches. So let's break down this eyeshadow palette just a little bit more than the other products. So as you can see, you get eight shadows in this palette. You get three matte shades, which are shades number one, four, and seven. Shade number two has a little bit of very finely milled glitter in it, but you really can't see it on the eye. And then shades number three, five, six, and eight are all like a satin finish. 
There are no shades in here that have a chunky glitter in them and I haven't experienced any fallout throughout the day of glitter down on my face. So let's take a look at the top four shades. These are just labeled shades one, two, three, and four. And we're gonna finger swatch them first and then we're going to brush swatch them. And the swatch of the first one is absolutely beautiful. Just a great, great matte shade. The second shade is also very nice. The third shade is a little patchier per a lot of satin shades. It's just not quite as opaque as when you pat it on with a fingertip. And then the final shade is another beautiful matte. This is the first row all together. And as you can see, this is the row that really leans more purple where the rest of the palette is actually more gray toned. If you're new to my channel, you're new to the wipe test, the purpose of this is to show, kind of simulate what it would look like through a whole day's worth of wear. And as you can see, all of these shades actually hang out there really, really well. I'm especially impressed with the very light shades because a lot of times those will easily wipe away. Moving on to the second row, and as you can see, the satiny shades really do have a beautiful finish, but there really isn't a lot of tonal variation between shades five, six, and seven, which is kind of disappointing. I cut right to the finished brush swatches here. Like I was saying a minute ago, there really isn't a whole lot of difference between shades five, six, and seven. Shade five is a little bit lighter. Shade six and seven really just is the difference between a shimmer and a matte. I wish that they had had a little bit of tonal variation in here. And then the last one, of course, is very light. Now here is the wipe test. And again, you can see all of the shades. You can barely see shade number eight there, but it's very, very light, so that's extremely typical. Now that you have seen the products being applied and heard some of my opinions, let's go ahead and get into an ingredient analysis. And I'm also gonna be doing my review at the same time as the ingredients, because the ingredient part is gonna be pretty short. So let's go ahead and start with the eyeshadow palette because that's the thing that I was most interested in. So it is a talc-based product. The ingredient list is really weird in that after talc on the website, it does talk about pigments right after that. Usually the pigments are always listed last. So I thought that was very, very odd. Oh no. Unfortunately, I did misplace the box for this, so I couldn't look on the box to see whether they were listed in the same order or not uh, on the actual box. But we do know that this is a talc-based product. It also includes mica. One thing to know about this entire line, pretty much, almost everything in the line, uh, phenoxyethanol is the preservative. They do seem to be paraben-free. There are ultramarines in this, which means that it's not lip safe. Uh, the only ingredient in here that I saw that was kind of a red flag for me for some people is the tocopherol acetate, which is a vitamin E. Some people are sensitive to that ingredient, so be careful if you are. There are some toxicity concerns with vitamin E, but the, the research is very mixed as far as whether those are legitimate for how much tocopherol acetate is actually in cosmetic products. So, but just so you know. Uh, as far as the performance of this eyeshadow, I really, really enjoy this palette. I think that it's very good for drugstore eyeshadow. I think that if you're going to school or work and you're not trying to look like you just walked off of a runway, this is a really great option. Personally, my personal favorite eyeshadows are super punchy, super poppy, super bold, punch it in the eye with some color, Juvia's Place, Colored Rain, like, bam, in your face, you know? That's the stuff that I really like, you know, Natasha Denona, stuff like that. This is not that. This is going to be a little more subtle. Think Too Faced, think Tarte. Uh, this is one of the best quality eyeshadow palettes I've ever tried from the drugstore. There are some NYX palettes that come close that I feel like are equal-ish equal-ish in quality. Um, what else? Some of the Wet n' Wild trios, I would say, are of similar quality to this, but I honestly really like this better than the Wet n' Wild trios. Just so you know. I gotta lay it out there. I gotta tell you the truth, but I mean, really and truly, it is a really nice formula. I think they did a fantastic job. I was pleasantly surprised just because I have really had a bad time with drugstore eyeshadows in the past. I've never had much faith in them, but yeah, I mean, definitely pleasantly surprised. Uh, when Oh, by the way, I just want to mention as far as NYX. NYX does have some different formulas of eyeshadows. I'm talking about their more pro formula that I feel like it compares to, not their like cheaper junkier formula. There's multiple formulas. I'll show you, um, I'll link some palettes that, down below that I really like the NYX formula, like the um, the Avant, Avant Pop palettes are pretty, are really good, and the, there's like a pro formula that's really good. Those are the ones I'm talking about, not, uh, not like the junky formula. So if you are just looking for a nice everyday wearable eyeshadow formula, this is definitely something I would recommend. I think it's a great alternative to the higher end products. So let's move on to the lipsticks. So 
The lipsticks, one thing you want to be careful with the ingredients is there is a lanolin based ingredient in here called, called isopropyl lanolate that is from lanolin. Lanolin is harvested from sheep's wool. So what they do is they shear the sheep and then like right where the sheep was touching the wool, there is like a secretion called lanolin. It's like this goopy stuff. And people, women use it, nursing mothers use it. There's a lot of like Bite, Buddy, Bite Beauty's Agave lip mask, uh, the Best Damn Beauty lip mask. Those are lanolin based lip products. So for me, it's a great ingredient for my lips. I really enjoy having it. But if you're allergic to sheep's wool or if you're vegan or if you just don't like that ingredient because you think it's creepy, you definitely don't want to get these lipsticks because it is in there. There's also an ingredient called BHT, which there's some irritation concerns. There is some mixed research on whether or not it causes cancer, but I will link that article down below so you can read that because that's a very freaky thing for me to say. So I will link that down below, but again, it's like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth with it. So read that down below and you'll have to make up your own mind. I personally don't have a problem with it based on the research that I've done, but I do want you to be educated and make that decision for yourself. So link down below on that. Other than that, that's it for ingredients for lipsticks that I wanted to mention. I will tell you, I really like this formula too. It's really, really good. I like the matte and the satin. They're both really nice. They go on super smooth. I feel like I've had these for like a couple of weeks and I feel like as they've gotten a little bit older, they're not quite as creamy as they were when I first bought them, but they're still very creamy. I wouldn't compare them to high-end lipsticks as far as the application of them and the overall hydration, but they're really nice lipsticks, especially for drugstore priced lipsticks. I really enjoy them. I love the way they wear down. They do leave a little bit of a stain on the lips, which I personally really like because after the lipstick moisture and the hydration has kind of worn away, you still have this like really pretty stain of the color, especially with the deeper shade. And I just, I'm really enjoying them a lot, a lot more than I thought I would. Hydration is nice it, it, for both of them. Even the matte one, there is some hydration to it, which I appreciate. Of course, they don't like dry down. They're, they're not transfer proof. They're lipsticks, but they're a really nice formula. This is actually, if I were gonna purchase something else that I think I would use, I would definitely purchase the lipsticks. I feel like this is, I feel like with eyeshadow, I've got a lot of high-end eyeshadows that I really, really love. So I don't think I'm gonna purchase any more of these, even, even though I do like them but I think I might purchase more of the lipsticks because I'm really enjoying them, especially if like a color particularly calls to me that I don't own in my collection, which, okay, let's be honest, I probably already own it, but... <laughs> Okay, Jen, you don't need them. Anti-consumerism, you don't need anymore, but I would be tempted to buy more of these on an impulse buy. I would. All right, Jen, moving on before you end up going online and buying some more lipsticks. Hey, let's talk about the mascara a little bit. As you saw in the demo, it's a very thick mascara. It can get very clumpy, but I don't mind that personally because I have these little tiny wimpy lashes. They're, they're like just lame lashes. My children both have beautiful lashes and I'm so jealous, but my lashes are just a mess. There's nothing there. And this makes me look like I actually have lashes. No mascara really makes me look like I have false lashes, but this comes pretty stinking close. Uh, it, but again, it is that clumpier formula. Think better than sex by Too Faced. I would really like to put this head to head with that as far as performance goes, because I, I really like it. It's really good. And I feel like I'm just, you know, I'm saying it's really good. It's really good. It's really good. But I do have something negative about this and it's the way that it comes off kind of freaks me out a little bit. You do have to use an oil-based eye makeup remover in order to take it off. At least that's been my experience. I usually have to use it more than one time and it comes off in these weird, odd, random flakes. I did have one get in my eye and it was kind of uncomfortable for a few minutes before I flushed it out. Uh, so this one, the removal process, I don't like. But the performance of it, I really like. I haven't had, I, I'm not one that gets a lot of flaking or smudging, so I'm not really a good person to judge for flaking and smudging. But for the record, I haven't had either happen to me. Uh, and overall, I'm really, really liking it. I just hate taking it off. So I would probably not repurchase this because I, there's so many mascaras that I really like just as much as this, uh, not better, but just as much as this, but that remove nicer. So I probably wouldn't repurchase this. As far as ingredients in the mascara, this one is also not vegan. There's beeswax, there's also palmitic acid. I know some of my subscribers don't buy anything with palm oil derivatives for environmental reasons. So it does have palmitic acid. It also has something called ammonium ethyl propanediol. I think I said that right. I'm hoping I did. And there's an irritation concern with that. So if you do find that this uh, that ingredient causes irritation or if you know that you're, that one causes you irritation, you want to stay away from this. And then finally, cyclopentasiloxane, which is if you are very environmentally conscious, 
this. Some products will include this. It has been found to bioaccumulate in sea life. If you wanna be really environmentally conscious, you wanna remove it with an oil-based makeup remover and a cotton pad. But the thing about that is, is that it, do, it, it takes a lot for it to come off that way. You really need to splash it with water in order to get it to completely come off of your eyes. So you're kind of, if you're really environmentally conscious, you really only have one choice to really get it off, which is to let it go down the sink. So depending on where you fall on that, then this is definitely gonna be a deal breaker there. And then finally, the brow product. So the only ingredients in this that were kind of like meh was the um, Ascorable Palmitate, which is another palm oil derivative. And this is the only product that I tried without phenoxyethanol. So if you don't like phenoxyethanol, you're fine on this one. Now, this was very interesting. I had to hand type the ingredients for this. They're not listed on the website. I had to go on the box. And what I found was this seems to be a stock formula. So let me tell you some things, some other ones that are very, very similar, if not exactly the same. So we've got the Beauty Session, which is an indie brand, $16. Pink Dust Cosmetics, $16. The Babrow Bar Brow Definer Pencil is $25. Uh, yeah. Uh, the Tarte Amazonian Clay Waterproof Brow Pencil is $21, exact same formula. The Ulta Ultra Slim Brow Pencil, $10, also exact same formula. And the Self Love Cosmetics, which is another indie brand, is $21 for this. So if you like the Tarte formula or if you've tried the B -B Brow Bar one uh, and you've been paying $25 for it, stop. <laughs> <laughs> because you can get the Ulta Brow Pencil, it's the same one, or you can get this one. And also, I think that it's gonna be also about which one matches your hair color the best. I found this one to match my hair color pretty well, and I do like this brow pencil. I've kind of found that I either really like a brow pencil or I don't, and there's a lot of them that I do really like. I really like the NYX one, I really like the Anastasia one, uh, there's a, quite a few of them I like. I really like the Too Faced Chocolate Brownie one, I really like some of the Benefit ones, I really like this one. It's a good pencil. I do find find that it's one that builds up nicely where you don't have to worry about it going on like ink and then you're like, oh my gosh, my brows, I got a lot of brows and they came out of nowhere, you know, it's not like that. So that's kind of nice that it kind of builds and you can make it darker as you go. I like that. Uh, it goes on very smooth, and it's but it's not too thick and creamy that it kind of gets stuck in the brow hairs and makes it look really weird. The spoolie on here is a good solid spoolie, no complaints there. Uh, it is one of those roll up ones, which overall roll up brow pencils are probably one of the worst value for brow products just in general. I didn't do price per gram or for any of this stuff because the video just would have been too long to do all of that. But just so you know, if you do want a better value for brow products, you want to stay away from these roll-up pencils in general and go with either a, um, pal a pomade or a powder brow product. And it is a very nice product. I mean, they did, a, they did a good job with it. I can't complain. So I have to tell you, I was pleasantly surprised by this line because you know I'm gonna, you know, I tested these things for what, three weeks I've been testing these products and I really like them. I think they're great. I don't think I'm gonna buy anything else from the line just because I feel like I've already done the review on them and I, you know, don't wanna do a bunch of videos on the same brand unless there's a specific request for something new. Maybe when their spring line comes out, if there's interest, I'll go back in and get some things from the spring line. If you all want me to. But overall, it's a definite recommend for all these products. I was like, oh, go Sally Beauty, you know? Uh, and it's nice to have some good high quality products at the drugstore so you don't have to spend, you know, $21 on a Tarte product or, you know, a Too Faced eyeshadow palette. I mean, really and truly, I would compare these to the Too Faced and Tarte formulas. They're they're really wonderful. Not the foiled formula from, from Tarte, but the regular matte and uh, shimmer shade. So now I'm going to turn the conversation over to you. If you've tried anything from the collab line, I would love to know about it down in the comments below. What have you tried? What have you thought about it so far? Let's all learn together in the collective brain of makeup awesomeness uh, so that we can all have the best knowledge on these products as possible. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, definitely make sure you give it a thumbs up because it makes me look really cool in the YouTube algorithm. I really appreciate it. And if you're not already subscribed, you can click the subscribe button down below. I usually put out nine videos a week. My schedule has been crazy because of the United States Thanksgiving holiday. So my schedule is a little bit off from what I normally do, but I do do five daily makeup minutes which is makeup news and then typically on Sundays I do a makeup news show full length and then three other tip trick videos in the week uh, it's just it's been a little crazy lately with the kids being home and everything so it's been a little off but we're gonna get back on schedule probably in January we'll finally get back on schedule so thank you again so much for watching and mad love to you and I will see you in a video soon bye